Hi, I'm Leon Bazem. I'm an art director, a motion designer, and today I want to give you guys an update on my two months of usage using the MacBook Pro M1 Max. I also want to give my thoughts on the current state of 3D software on the Mac. So let's get right into it. So over the last couple of months, I've been using the MacBook Pro M1 Max as my daily driver for my projects. I really want to test out the benefits of the large VRAM and see how that affects my 3D workflow. If you take a look at my last video, there was a couple of issues using different software and particularly software that wasn't that as optimized for the M1. So this time I tried to use only software that is optimized. So today I'll be using Cinema 4D Redshift and DaVinci Resolve to create a CGI car commercial. And let's take a look how, how it went. Now let's take a look at how I put this together and let's see how 3D users can benefit from having such a large VRAM. I started out with rigging the car with Cinema 4D's built-in rigging system. If you guys want a longer video on this, I can do this in a different video at a different time. So let me know. As you can see how fast the live viewer responds, this graphics card is equivalent to a 1080 Ti from my testing. If you have one, that's the kind of reference to how this works. I'm currently using the Grayscale Gorilla Plus library. I'm not sponsored by them in, in any way, but uh, it's a really cool library to get quick um, materials if you need. And um, as you can check, as you can see from the left side there, this is how fast it responds. While the M1 Max is not the fastest graphics card out there, it's good enough for quick previews in the texturing and lighting stage. For this clip, I used Exparticles for the burnout. I just wanted to use something that's already built in in Cinema 4D. And I, I think it, it did a pretty good job. I might use Houdini to see what's the big difference I can get, but Exparticles work pretty fine for this clip. And for those of you that want to see how 32 gigabytes handles all of this, here you go. So as you can see here, I haven't dug that heavily into the swap disk, but as you can see, it's pretty much using all of the memory here. So if you're going to use heavy VD, VDBs, you will definitely need a 64 gigabyte version of this laptop. Now here is one of the larger scenes, I would say. As you can see, the viewport works really fine. None of the buildings in the back I used instance in on, so they're just very unoptimized copies of each of the buildings. And as, as you can see, the, the viewport works totally fluid and it handles the playback really well. Also during this testing, the fans were very inaudible. It was dead quiet while creating these scenes and navigating through all of these high geo and textures. Again, we can take a look at the feedback display and we can see how our 32 gigabyte of memory is holding up. I still used under 200 megabytes of swap disk. As you can see, it's still on yellow. I know red is bad, but yellow is kind of like a warning, but usually for a laptop, this is fine. You won't usually, on normal circumstances, try to use these high geo scenes on the laptop. Also, you can always get the 64 gigabytes of RAM 
if you need to. And I highly recommend DaVinci Resolve for any of any 3D compositors out there. Um, I switched my compositing workflow from After Effects to DaVinci Resolve and it works the way it should. You can switch between your editing and your compositing software seamlessly with no hiccups. Also, DaVinci Resolve has industry standard coloring. So I highly recommend DaVinci Resolve. Not sponsored, but I highly recommend it. I've been using it for the last week now and it's been amazing experience. I know while this isn't a big deal for most users, it was quite a relief to actually use such a large scene on a small portable laptop as the MacBook Pro. I even went to the mall and I was able to use the laptop as I normally do on a desktop and the battery life was pretty good. Like it went from 100 to 75% within two hours of usage and that was rendering and live playback of animation. And with all that aside, here are the issues that you would face. Some of the major 3D apps are not optimized, AKA not ready. So it's kind of used at your own risk. So Maya, World Creator, Houdini, Keyshot, <laughs> everything, etc., etc., ZBrush, they are all still running on Rosetta. Be kind of careful in using it in production environments, I would say, because you might not get great support because it's not supported yet. Cinema 4D and Blender is the only one that is M1 optimized. And Blender itself is still in beta, especially with cycles. Redshift is the only M1 optimized for metal right now that actually works the way it should on the Mac is gonna be the same way it looks on the PC. So Redshift is the only GPU renderer that does that at the moment. So keep that in mind if you're gonna switch. But right now, the best combination you can go with is Cinema 4D and Redshift because they're both optimized and they're made by the same company. So that combination is kind of the best combination I've found to be working. I mean, Blender is fine, but um, it's still in beta. Cycles is still in beta at the moment. Issues of the laptop right now, I would say what I found, there was still kind of a memory leak issue. It's still there. It, like at certain times, the application would use more than what's available in the RAM. It shows like, it will show like 42 gigabytes used and some weird stuff. So it's still kind of apparent. And I think this, this is really happening because before there was a separation between the CPU and the GPU RAM. So like having them combined, I think that is causing some type of issue. Like while using Cinema 4D, I ran into certain issues where Cinema 4D would load all of the ge geometry in its cache. And it would use like, okay, all the 32 gigabytes of RAM, for example. But then if Redshift try to use that same RAM, it's not sharing it with it. So Redshift won't start until I restart Cinema 4D. With all that said, and the few actual 3D software that actually work natively or even available on the M1, it's really difficult to gauge and benchmark this laptop without cherry picking software it works with currently. Even though some of the blame lies with the developers, this is still an ongoing transition to Apple Silicon. So with that said, I still suggest skipping the M1 and M1 Max generation if you can. Because if you do any of these 3D motion or motion graphics for a living, by the time the software becomes optimized, you'll be looking at the M2 Max anyway. And I think you'll get a better experience overall because CGI and 3D motion graphics is such a demanding field that coming in here right now and have to deal with going to the forums trying to figure out why isn't the noise zone not working now and it worked before and why this keeps crashing and all of the stuff and just like most of the major players on this platform it isn't ready yet so keep that in mind that's why i got the base model m1 max because i think the next generation it will be the generation to actually go into this this generation is just for the beta testers the youtubers who want to experiment 
but for the next generation i think the m2s is where you can actually go in there and get the four terabyte and the 64 to 128 gigabyte ram i think that's the next generation of this macbook pro is where you can actually go all in but for this generation i think you can just wait it out all right so yes let's move on to something that's more fun so my next videos are going to be more of product and motion design in general i can't really say much about the m1 max as of now on things until things get a little bit better but stay tuned for more product reviews if i get any any more cool product software reviews and probably even tutorials so thank you guys please like and subscribe see you on the next video